Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we will take a look at a team where I went yesterday 12 and 0 with a 2 hit 2544 rating. Very high right now, like nearly top 100 on the leaderboards as well. So let's move right on to the team. We're going to have a team here with Galissapod. Galissapod is highly underrated in the current meta. This Pokemon is amazing. Here we're going to run a moveset of Exeter as well as the Aerial Ace. Usually you would want to run something like the Liquidation. But there's no need in the current meta because all Pokemon are kinda resisting liquidation. There are only like two exceptions, which are kinda Mawile or the um, Galarian Weezing. And like those are basically the only Pokemon that would be able to, or like where it would be beneficial for you to have liquidation. Otherwise, Aerial is going to give you better coverage against Pokemon like Roserade. And as you can see here as well, which I completely forgot there was actually a Roserade here. But also, of course, Exodus is just going to be your best neutral move otherwise, which is going to hit something, for example, for better like the Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn going to get neutral damage from it. So, otherwise, we're going to have on this team here Tropius. I know it's a regional Pokemon, but it has been available also for people even in the wild during GoFest before, so I feel like most people are going to have this Pokemon. Maybe you can run Jumpluff instead as well, um, but Tropius definitely is the better option for it. And in the back, we're going to have the Emporion. There is, I don't think there's really a good option otherwise than the uh, Tropius, to be fair, other than like Jumpluff, just because of yeah, other Pokemon that would be a little bit tricky to deal with. For example, I thought of even going for something like a Trevenant in the lead, but Trevenant in the lead would make you weak to other Tropius, and I did not really want to do this, so that's why I went for my own Tropius. You're going to encounter the Emporia, and you kind of have to be a little bit mindful of how to play this team, and um, like kind of on how to keep your Pokemon kind of healthy, because it is not really that straightforward. I use sometimes Emporia as a Seisop, I use sometimes um, Galissapod as a Seisop, really depends on what you're going to encounter in the lead, so I would be a little bit more flexible on what I would use depending on what you're going to encounter. For example, if you encounter something like a poison type in the lead, you might want to go ahead and go into your Galissapod instead of your Emporion because your Emporion is going to have a better matchup later on. Well, for example, if you're going to encounter something like a Dugong in the lead, you really would like to run, like, use a Hazor basically of the Emporion, because Emporion is going to be a little bit tricky with, like, the drill run. You can still deal with it in the two shield scenario fairly easily, but um, your Galissapod is going to be able to completely wall Dugong, so you kind of want to still keep this in the bag. So, like, basically, whatever Pokemon you're going to encounter in the lead, you kind of want to go into the worst Pokemon as your Hazor, either Emporion or the Galissapod. There is no clear Hazor for this kind of lineup, but usually, like, most of the time, it is usually the Gullis support that I went into. Here we're going to encounter the Roserade, which is going to go for a Weather Ball. We can still go for an Air Raid Ace, which is going to be able to force the shield from them. I can swap out and still reach a Drill Pack and win this game fairly easily. We also, by the way, battling against Snow Tactical later on, so stay tuned for that one. Moving on, we're going to take a look now at the Dugong lead. That's exactly what I mean here. I decided to swap out into the Emporion instead. We're going to get out the Polyrath. Really not ideal. Like, literally hard-walled the entire way through right now. Um, not ideal for us at all. But still, it's going to be the better way to go to basically decide to, yeah, swap into your Emporion. To try to get out whatever they have in the back. And still going to keep your Galissapod in the back. Because Galissapod is going to be great against both Polyrath as well as the Dugong. But because I kind of need them for especially the Dugong, I decided to go into my Tropius first. I can go for a charge move later on, but they have a Tentacruel in the back. Tentacruel is most likely the worst Pokemon that I could encounter with this team. You can still deal with it though, um, with the Pokemon in the back, especially the Emporion. Emporion is a great answer for the Tentacruel, but here, of course, our Emporion is already gone. So we're gonna stay in with our Tropius. We have to hope that they can have Acid Spray. Acid Spray would be ideal for us. Hopefully, they do have it. They do have it, which is way better. I feel like Sludge Wave, by the way, is the better move to go for, Tenta for Tentacruel in this meta. I don't think that Acid Spray is the correct play. I think Essence Ray might be the correct play for the Shadow variant, but like Sludge Wave seems like so much consistent and so much more annoying than Acid Spray, I feel like, at least for me playing against Tentacruels. But now we're going to see the matchup here against the opponents. Dugong, of course, we have to kind of still use Shields here because we're double debuffed at this point from the Acid Spray prior, but we can just go for the Exeter, which is going to do the most amount of damage here. We can most likely go for a Knockout, but I don't really want to go for a Knockout yet. Why? Because for me, I need some energy right now. I know that they're going to have still the Tentacruel lurking in the back. I should win CMP tie against any Pokemon from them with my Galissapod, and so I can go for the knockout now. I can swap out. I still can get to one Leaf Blade, and if they shield, we should be able to win this one. We have one Aerial Ace stored, which would be able to do some neutral damage, and definitely enough at this stage. And yes, this was a CMP tie, but we can win this one, and so this was perfectly played, and we can move on to the next one. 
Next opponent, another Dugong, another swap into our Emporion instead of to our Galissapod, because Galissapod is going to be better later on. Here we're going to stay in for uh, maybe a little bit too long, maybe sure went for a charge move a little bit earlier. You would be able, I think, to survive one drill run, by the way. Like, you would not be forced to use a shield here. But at the end of the day, basically, um, it is very likely that we're going to align the Dugong later on against our Galissapod. And I'd rather shield now a super effective drill run than, than I'm forced to shield like a uh, resisted Icy Wind later on. So I'm just going to use both of my shields, actually, because we can get a ton of energy here and also we're going to be able to mostly get some of those shields back because the coverage of Emporion in this meta is just great like the flying type coverage is just basically covering for everything plus also the fast move so here we will see the trophy is coming in from the opponent I can go for two drill packs I will even be able to connect one that can swap out into my own trophy I was hoping that I would be able to catch one leaf plate from the opponent was not able to but aerial ace is not going to do that much damage and so we can even go for the full farmland against them they are going to have a little bit of a problem now most likely because they still have so much energy plus two very healthy pokemon in the back the dugong is basically down already and they have a tentacruel again in the back which is kind of similar to the team that we encountered earlier on um but here we will see that they're going to use a shield actually very smart by them because like i feel like this would be the hardest hitting move of my team against the tentacruel so definitely smart by them to shield this one here we can still go back into our emporion I have to hope that I can still reach one drill pack, at least Skull is coming through, they're gonna get no debuff and so we can reach that drill pack. And now I'm going to be forced to swap out of here. Now we have to hope that our Galissapod is going to be enough, of course the neutral Shadow Claw is adding up quite a bit, I can go for the Aerial Ace and so I will be able to do some very nice damage against them and now we can even go for the full farm down, we are not even have to go for any charge move here anymore either. They're going to decide to just let it go and so the opponent's Diogong is also going to go down and we can easily win this game with our Galissapod. Also Galissapod is a very cheap Pokemon to build which is really cool for this meta as well. Emporion lead. Emporion lead is a little bit of a trickier one in my opinion. I usually decide to swap out immediately into my Galissapod um, and this is also kind of the idea of the team here. A lot of times you're going to get out the Lantern. Against Lantern you're still going to get to at least one X Scissor, but you're definitely going to get them into range for your um, lead of Tropius, which is really important for me at least. And you kind of get rid of the hardest answer for Emporion with that. Emporion has only really two answers in this meta, I would say, which is going to be the Polyrath and the Lantern. And basically everything else you're going to be fine against and getting rid of one of those Pokemon already is going to be so, so crucial, especially as you can get some energy now on the Tropius as well with that. And this is going to help out quite a bit with the matchup against the opponent's Emporion, especially as we can reach another Leaf Blade very soon as well. They're going to go for one charge move here as well. I can go for the shield. I can still force either the knockout here or a shield from the opponent. And so we're going to be in our case spot. We still have to hope that there's something in the back that we can deal with with our own Emporion, but they're actually going to outspeed me, which I did not really hope for at least. So I'm going to let this move go through. Maybe not ideal for us, but we still have our own Emporion, which can maybe go for the full farm done. This was my hope here. They swap out into a Trevenant. And with this, we can go for a super effective drill pack, which is not going to get the knockout. If you have a Shadow variant of Emporion, it might be actually better than the normal variant here. Shadow variant would be able to one-shot something like a Trevenant here, which would be really great for us. But we are forced to use a shield, which is okay. I can go for a charge move. I think I still outspeed them, but maybe I can even farm them down. I Definitely still survive one charge move from them though, and we actually win the CMP tie, and so we can win this game. Good game there, let's move on to the next opponent. And Jimmy is up next, and we're going to have a great lead of Polyrath. And they actually decide to usually stay in here because of the Ice Wind. A lot of times, if they have a Polyrath lead, which I encountered here, was that they were going to be very weak against Tropius in the back as well. So they usually stay in, try to go for the Ice Wind. And here, they actually decide to go for the Ice Wind as well. Sometimes they go for a Power Punch Bait. But here, Icy Wind it is. And so we're going to have a very decent matchup as we can go for a charge move. They're going to survive it, but we can swap out into the Galissapod. Everything is resisted here. And also, even if they swap out, of course, they don't have the health anymore for um, yeah, being basically a threat then against our Emporion. Emporion is going to be fine at this point. They're going to have a interesting Pokemon in the back here. Yeah, I would not really say that this is an issue for us because this is like, I don't know, like Ferrothorn is very good in this meta in general, but we can just go for some very hard-hitting Exodus, even though they're going to be debuffed, and we're still going to have our Tropius, which can take some moves. 
I just don't really know how to play against this Pokemon. Like, I don't know which Pokemon is really the best for it. I feel like everyone is kind of very neutral against it, which is totally fine. So here, for example, Flash can just does a ton of damage, which is a little bit annoying. But at least we're going to get some energy as they swap out into the Trevenant. I know already that basically this game is over unless they can catch the move. What is a little bit annoying, which I also had experience in this battle, which you I don't know if it's going to be really visible, but it, the game is sometimes very, very clunky. And um, here I was over farming a little bit here. Actually, I wanted to click on the move actually a little bit earlier, but yeah, they were able to catch the move and so this is going to be still a very tricky game. Can we outspeed them? We can and so we can still win this game, but this could have been very very bad for me, but it wasn't and so we can win this game. Next opponent. Very decent lead for us. It is going to be um, a Roserade swap out, which is something that I don't really like too much, but it's not too bad. If they go for Leaf Storm, you can just go for the full farm down. If they go for the bait, you have to go for a charge move and you might have to use another shield. Really depends on what they're going to do here. They decide to go for the Weather Ball, which is a little bit annoying. They're going to use a shield, so I decide to use a shield afterwards as well, most likely, as I can just realign. It's going to be a Leaf Storm now for sure. And so we can just go for the full farm down. In comes now the Jellicent against us again we can go for our drill pack but our team is very good against this pokemon so i would like to swap out here but i can still reach another drill pack drill pack is going to do some very decent damage against them and yeah just in case i'm just going to decide to swap out here i can take easily a shadow ball from them onto my tropius which is going to be a little bit better for us they're going to have their own tropius in the back so i actually kind of do enjoy that i swapped out of here um but yeah basically i can align my gullet support later on against there um, Jellison, which is going to be a better matchup for me. And here I actually didn't know that I would get to the move at the same time, which doesn't really matter because they're going to win the Team Peter against me anyway. But I can now go into my Emporian. And I know, I actually know just based on the experience that I had with Emporian so far in this cup, that this is not going to be enough to knock me out. And so I was pretty sure that it wouldn't. And so we will be able to still reach one draw pack, knock them not out, but we're going to knock them into range where I can farm them down. And the Eagle support is going to knock out the opponent's Jellicent and win this game again. Honestly, Eagle support was so much fun to play. Now we're up against though Tactical. We're going to have a Mirror lead. We're going to have Tropius against Tropius. What I kind of want to do for this lead is um, if you hit an Aerial Ace and the opponent's an Aerial Ace and you can just then shield up the next charge move and farm them all the way down. Basically, that's what I want to do here because... Um, yeah, that is going to be, I think, kind of nice for me, as we see here as well, the opponent is actually very low. I think they just don't really have a great IV option of the Tropius, most likely, based on their HP stat so far, but I can just leave here with basically two Leaf Blade stored. They're going to go into their Jellicent, which means that they're going to have another Water-type Pokemon in the back that is going to be very weak here. So... I wonder what it's going to be, but I can now decide to swap out because I let both of the moves go through and I have now a good support against a Quagsire. A Pokemon that I actually want to try out as well. I actually did try it out already, but in the lead position where it did not really function too well. I think it's way better as a closer as well, so definitely something that I want to try out in the future. But um, issue for this one is that Quagsire has access to the move Stone Edge, which will one-shot us. And also access, access to the move Mud Bomb, which is going to be very tricky for Emporian in the back. So, what can we do here? We can see our Golisopod going down from a Stone Edge, and we just have to hope. We just have to hope either we can catch a move on the Tropius, which is risky because we are in Farmer range, or we can survive a move. I tried to catch the move here, for whatever reason it didn't really went through at all, but we can still survive that one, we can still go for a charge move, and so this is going to be it for this one. Good game there to the tactical, and we can move on to the final one for today. Ferrothorn lead. What do you do here? You kind of want to stay in, but like, here's the thing as well, like, this is the thing which I talked about before. I feel like Ferrothorn is just like so neutral against everything. I just decided to swap out here, trying to catch a flash can, which would be resisted, which does work out amazingly here as well. It just doesn't say it's resisted because the game is currently a little bit bugged in that regard. But what we can see here is they can still go for a power whip, but I have now a ton of energy stored. I can go for one extra. I think they might be able to outspeed me if they go straight for the charge move, but they decided to not do this, and so I can reach another extra. Force either the shield or the knockout, and I'm going to be fine with that. We're gonna force the shield, which I'm totally okay with. I'm just gonna use the shield as well, I think, at this point. Farm them down can realign my Pokemon, and this is going to be very important, especially with a Tentacruel lurking in the back. I can just swap out into my Emporion while keeping one charge move stored for later on, because for me, I felt like there was no real need for me to go for a charge move here. Very unlucky here that we got the debuff, of course, 50% chances, like, 
50%, so like you're going to have it eventually anyway. But I think they're actually going to get the second debuff here as well, if, we, if I remember correctly, which was pretty annoying for me. Exactly, they got, you're going to see like the drop again here, so two times debuff against me, so this is going to do basically no damage. If we did not get the first debuff especially, we would have been able to knock them out at this point already, but now they have the option to swap out into the Bruxish, where I can go for a drill pack, I can swap out, go for one leaf blade, and now I can go for another fast move and go for another leaf blade if they don't go straight for their move. And they do exactly this, and so the opponent's Broxish is going to go down for sure. They're only going to have the Tentacruel in the back, and I can swap out, snipe them even with my Galissa pot, go for the Aerial Ace, knock them out, win this game, and this is going to be it for this video. Amazing team, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!